So for the fetal pig dissection, I'm going to start you actually with the fetal pig handout. Um, so this, this handout is specifically for the fetal, fetal pig dissection. Um, I mentioned some of the um, landmarks um, with you for you in the lecture, um, but the um, those are listed here again. Um, then you get instruction how to dissect the pig, and you may want to look at that as the pig uh, is being dissected on the video. Also, uh, pay attention to the the major areas. Um, and it explains um, a little bit how all these things go together. Um, so just look through that, see how all these things are connected and what all these different physiological um, things do. Um, you're then asked, so there's pictures, still pictures of all of this. Um, and then you're asked to fill out um, these um, different regions. Um, on the pig. Uh, I'm going to give you a quiz where you can fill all these things out. So um, fill them out here, but you'll see all the same questions in the quiz. And so you can just transfer whatever you wrote on here um, to the quiz. Um, so, but with that being said, we close out of this and let's go to the, um, the website. So this is on the Google website. So you're going to spend a lot of time on this website. Uh, this is the animal diversity section. And um, you're going to spend, so you should listen to the lecture first. Um, there's a demonstrate, there's a dichotomous key tutorial, which you're going to need for the skull. Um, there are representatives of the, um, of the different groups that you're going to Thanks be talking about. Um, the skull identification video is on here. And this gets us now to the fetal pig dissection video. And I'm actually going to sit here and watch this video with you. Thanks for joining me for this fetal pig dissection. First little bit is going to be making our incisions. And then once we're done opening up the body cavities, we will go through all of the structures that you need to know. All right, first things first, let's go ahead and identify the sex of our pig based on the testes protruding from the back. I know this is definitely a male. To begin our dissection, we're going to need a scalpel, nice and sharp. On the one hand, I'm really sad that we can. We're going to need to go through many layers of tissue, including epithelial tissue, connective tissue, and also muscle, as well as some bone and cartilage in the thoracic area. So this is a process. But at the same time, I'm happy that you get to see this. And sometimes we're just going to be going layer by layer. So even if we go back in person, I will actually probably assign a video like this in advance to give you an idea of what you're trying to accomplish. The students just start cutting away. Notice I began my incision way up high. That's because we also want to dissect the areas of the neck. There are a lot of goodies to see up there as well. And watch those fingers with that scalpel. You want to be careful when you're dissecting to initially not go too deep because you can damage underlying organs. All right, that flow of liquid tells me that I'm into the abdominal cavity. This is why he's wearing gloves. From here, it's probably a good idea to switch to dissecting scissors. Now, I know you can't see my face, but I'm wearing a mask right now and it's a good idea to wear a mask whenever you open up the body cavities of a larger specimen that's been preserved 
because as soon as you open it up, a lot of times you can get one initial burst of formaldehyde gas, which is not good. So you want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated lab, which I am, and also that you're if you're doing an initial dissection such as this one. Again, you want to go bit by bit. You want to be careful not to go too deeply, especially when you're right above the liver. The liver is extremely delicate within these fetal pigs, very easy to damage. See how it's getting ready to cut it, but underneath of the uh, umbilical cord, you see there is a. You'll see me switching back see and the, forth the, between. There's a little oh, connection. Dissecting scissors see right there. and my scalpel. There's a connection. Depending upon uh, what the need clearly is. Clearly, you got fed through your umbilical cord, right? So. It's connected. Your umbilical cord is actually connected to everything in your in your body. You want to open this up pretty wide down there so you can get a good reach and, and get to the... When you're making the incisions on the lower half of the abdominal cavity, you want to go nice and deep with your incision so that when we open up these flaps that we're creating, we have a nice deep flap that will lie open. And also we want to create a clear view so that we can get to the kidneys eventually. And there goes the connection with the umbilical cord. So we actually tie our picks down. Um, Every now and then you might need to flip your fetal pig over, allow a little bit of the juice to drain out so you can clear up your field of view. Where he's having to that's what I'm doing there. all the time. We, we tie them down and make that a And when I'm using the scalpel, again, I'm not going very deep with it. I'm primarily using the scalpel almost to draw a line so that I know where I want to dissect at. You can get extremely clean cuts with a scalpel. So I like making those initial incisions using the scalpel. And you can cut yourself with a scalpel and not even know it. Again, that brings up a safety question. These scalpels are ridiculously sharp. If you get cut with a scalpel, you don't know it until after you see the blood. Sometimes you even feel very little pain initially. So be extremely careful whenever you use any sort of sharp instruments for dissection, but especially scalpels. So one of the things I tend to do... When and also, when you're not using the scalpel, place it off to the side in an area where neither you or any lab partners are going to place your hand on top of it or knock it off of the tabletop or anything like that. So one of the things, once, once students open this... All right, cutting through some bone... He's opening the some cartilage here. here as we move up into the thoracic cavity. And what I usually do at that point is I, I just, I, I basically grab the two sides and pull it down, breaking all the ribs. And it makes a very interesting sound, which usually makes my students cringe. And you don't know me, but I have a sick satisfaction with that sound. Also have to cut through the diaphragm here. That's also something students usually forget. The diaphragm it keeps it keeps the whole cavity closed by by res uh, restricting your ability to open it up. He gets access to everything by opening it opening it up as wide as he does. Most students don't cut that far down. Notice so we're starting this is a good arm our flap there. But see if he breaks the back, right? If he breaks the um. If he were to break those um, bones, then he would he could open it basically flat. You want to be careful when you're making these incisions on the side not to damage the lungs, which are right here. Looks like we left those intact. 
That's good news. Yeah, we also have pins, so our surfaces are soft, and we have pins that we pin the egg down with, so that you're not constantly fighting with the flaps. Again, take your time. Anytime you do a dissection, be very deliberate. So you've got the liver here, small intestines there, but he'll go through some of that, I think. All right, I need a quick drain here. Also, be careful that there aren't any fumes, like I mentioned earlier, that you're not paying attention to. Now, I really want you to see what's in the neck. Formaldehyde gas, which is dangerous. Because one of my favorite structures is the trachea, because and and I really am sad we don't get to see. All right, dissecting the neck is extremely tricky. Lots of connective tissue, lots of muscles. And hopefully, we can dissect the neck in such a way as to not damage too much of the structure. Obviously, we, won't, we don't want to damage the larynx or the trachea. But in the pig, the thymus gland also lies on either side of the trachea. And the thyroid gland lies right in the middle, which is analogous to humans. So sometimes this is hit or miss. I just like to slowly but surely work my way in with a scalpel, often around the edges. He's feeling At this point, you might want to employ some forceps. Trying to see if you can feel it. At times. Remove some muscle. I haven't seen this video in a while, so I, I can't quite tell yet if you can see the trachea yet. I feel like he needs to clean this out a little. Usually, yeah. I'm dissecting ventral side of the neck. You just have to take your time and work through the different layers. And we'll see how I do here. Trachea may be, oh, put his hand in front, never mind. Maybe right there. I'm not sure though, I can't see it well enough. That's the heart that he's cutting around. Just removed a portion of the pericardial sac. That's... Which surrounds the heart. All right, we're starting to get in here a little bit more. Yeah, see, when if, if he had it tied down, right, he wouldn't have to be fighting with it all the time. He could just... Tie it down and leave it immobilized. Be extremely careful when cutting with a scalpel close to your fingers. Sometimes you just have to do this a little bit the old fashioned way. Stick your fingers in there and separate tissue. Watch those fingers. <laughs> Thought better of it. Starting to make some real progress here. There we go. Now you can see it. Starting to expose the trachea the here. Trachea right there. And what you see, no, 
can we go in there further? I won't let me zoom in. Oops. <laughs> well, that's not going to work. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> so the trachea, if you look at it really closely, you can see that it's got cartilage wings. And keep that in mind for um, a minute from now. So we're going to chat about the differences between the trachea and the esophagus and their roles and what that means for um, for their function. All right, I believe we're just about there. At least enough so that I can run through some structures with you. Next looking decent. All right. Let's start up here with the neck. Right up here is the larynx. You can notice it's enlarged cartilaginous. Below it we have the trachea or the windpipe. And you can notice that there are rings of cartilage running all the way down the trachea, you just can, like with a human. You can feel that with, with Now, unlike horses. a human, the thymus glands of the pig lie up here in the neck. That's what this fleshy lobe is right here. There's still some connective tissue and muscle surrounding it. But each of these right here is primarily thymus. Right here in the middle of the trachea, pretty happy about this, that has remained intact. This is the thyroid gland, found in a very similar position as you would see in human anatomy. Moving on down into the thoracic cavity. Obviously, this right here is the heart. You can see it's enlarged muscular organ. The left ventricle will be running all the way down to the apex or the tip of the heart. On either side of the heart, you can notice these fleshy lobes. They're very delicate. They're also very lightweight and squishy. If you were to feel them with your gloved hand, those are the different lobes of the lung. Up underneath that, we have this flap right here. This flap is the remnant of our diaphragm, the diaphragm. Now, I've had to cut it all the way around so that we could open up the thoracic and abdominal cavities, but you can still see the remnant of the diaphragm right there. Now, as we enter into the abdominal cavity, very prominently in the upper part, you can find the liver, all the lobes of the liver. Notice how this is in, there are lobes right here, they separate. You want to be extremely gentle when touching the liver. Only use a blunt probe as it's extremely delicate. Now up underneath the liver right here is the gallbladder. It looks like a deflated balloon. Sometimes it'll have like a greenish color to it. Notice it right there. Now let's go through the other portions of our digestive tract. This large balloon-like organ over here looks like an inflated balloon, actually has a lot of gas in it. That's the stomach. The stomach would then connect to the small intestine, which is what is primarily filling the lower portion of the abdominal cavity. All of this tubing through here is the small intestine. All around the intestine. Notice it's got connective tissue. You can see my glove through it there, that clear connective tissue, that mesentery, with lots and lots of blood vessels running to and from the small intestine to aid in digestion. This organ right over here, this is the colon, the large intestine. Now pigs, they have a little bit different uh, shaped colon than humans. Humans, you know, they have the ascending, transverse, and descending colon, then the sigmoid colon going down to the rectum and anus. Pigs, they have a, a circularly arranged colon. It's called the spiral colon. And it's held together by connective tissue spirally, like a corkscrew. Okay, over here we have the ribbon-like spleen. 
over on the left side of the body. Then, he's looking for the pancreas. Might have to work for it a little bit. There's still some connective tissue in the way, but the pancreas would be located right here, just behind this connective tissue, if we can gently, gently tear through it. Pancreas itself is gonna be extremely delicate. Not sure if you can see it or not, but right in here, there's some glandular tissue, and that would That's be the, the pancreas. pancreas. You typically find the pancreas very close to the curvature of the stomach. All right. Again, we can see the large intestine going on down further. Now, I want us to take a look at a kidney, but keep in mind the kidneys do not lie within the abdominal cavity. So in order to get to a kidney, we need to do a little bit more dissecting. So in fact, the kidney on the left side, left side of the body lies right here. So to get to it, I just want to make gently some incisions around it, cutting through the wall of the abdominal cavity here a little bit. Those fingers. Exposing this kidney. And voila! Here's the kidney right here, now exposed. So in order to find the kidney, you have to look behind the abdominal cavity. Keep that in mind. You'll notice right here you have the umbilical cord still attached. You'll find the umbilical artery and umbilical veins as a part of that, if you'd like to point that out as well. And again, keep in mind the kidneys are paired organs. And there would be another kidney right here towards the back of the body. All right, congratulations if you stayed with me. You made it through the entire fetal pig dissection. I hope you learned something. Also, check out the shorter version of the fetal pig dissection where we just go through the structures of an already dissected fetal pig on my YouTube page. Thank you. All right, so that was the fetal pig. And um, there is uh, another one through, um, that runs through a couple of different organs. Uh, it just identifies different structures if you wanted to see some more structures. Um, the other thing that I would recommend you do is to go to um, Whitman, um, which has a really nice virtual pig dissection. So uh, they go through, and this is where my pictures are actually coming from, um, they go through the regions of the pig, you know, anterior, posterior, dorsal, ventral, what all those things mean. Um, they talk about sexing your pig. So this is what a male looks like. Um, and the male actually, it just has a little bulge. Um, a lot of people mistake the female for the male uh, because the female has this papilla and it, it reminds people of a penis. Uh, but no, if it's got a, you know, if it's got a papilla, that's the girl actually. Um, and then this, um, it walks you through, you can start, you know, at the head and you basically go through the head and the, the inside the oral cavity. And it talks about all the different things that you can see and what they are. And um, you can walk through the respiratory system. So all those different systems, oh, that's your trachea again. So if you look at the trachea, uh, there's the esophagus and then there's the trachea and the trachea has the cartilage rings. Let me talk about that concept. So if you're thinking about, let's just use a pen. Let's just use a thicker pen. Paintbrush, paintbrush is good. 
Um, so let's say we have, uh, so we've got the trachea and we've got the esophagus and both of them transport things down, but the esophagus transport things in, but the esophagus, so esophagus, and this is the trachea. So the esophagus transports food down, the trachea transports air. And what's interesting about the trachea is the way the trachea uh, transports air down um, is the it does it by um, by pulling a vacuum down here, so the uh, the diaphragm moves down, and when the diaphragm moves down, it inflates the lungs, and so the whole thing happens with with a vacuum. This is how air gets actually pulled into your um, into your um, into your lungs. Now, if you have a tube that's a soft tube and you suck air through it, um, what's going to happen is this tube can potentially collapse. And so because of that, the trachea has cartilage rings, kind of like a vacuum cleaner hose. Uh, it's got cartilage rings that help you keep it open. On the other hand, the esophagus uh, brings food down with what's called peristaltic movement. So the esophagus has to be soft. It's, it's muscular, but it, it can collapse in its entirety because it has this, this, you know, basically if you've ever milked a cow, that's, that's essentially the kind of movement that your, um, that your esophagus makes. It contracts kind of in waves, um, thereby moving the food down into your stomach. And that's basically the gist between the trachea and the esophagus that I want you to understand. But yeah, so this goes through all of those things. And then the last thing I wanted you to see is actually this, um, how your lungs work. Um, because I don't think that you've ever thought about this, but this this is how, ooh, that's not do with it. So we're not as concerned with making this thing, right? We're really just more concerned with the function. So this this is how this functions. You your your um basically your diaphragm down here, it contracts it, so it, it goes down, right? And when it goes down, it expands the area in your lungs, uh, in your in your um pleural cavity. Um, and that, that that so your lungs don't they don't inflate themselves. There's no muscles in your lungs. They literally just inflate because there's a vacuum. And so the vacuum that gets pulled in here inflate these, and then that's why air is being sucked in. Um, this is why it's important um, that if you have an injury um, that interferes with that, then you're going to end up, um, you're going to end up not being able to breathe um, because the vacuum is necessary. And if you break the ability to create a vacuum, then it won't work anymore. So just like that, Oops. let's go back to here. So you pull and the lungs inflate. That's how it works. That's how you breathe. That's fascinating. Okay, and so that video is also available on your um, on the website. And that's all for today.